What's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with the one and only uh, Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And we're going to be talking today about three principles, three success principles that separate the top 1% income earners from all the rest, that separate the studs from the duds, the champs from the chumps, those who are in the upper echelon of income earners on planet Earth in the mortgage industry, and those who struggle to survive those who struggle just to eco to meager existence in this business. What's the difference that makes the difference? What are those three principles that allow those shining stars in this industry to stand on the stage in the limelight with the rewards, recognition, freedom, abundance that everyone else is frankly watching and wishing they could have what is the difference that makes the difference that allows these top producers that are making half a million to a million plus per year working 40 hours or less a week allows them to do what they do to live in that freedom in that abundance what that's what we're going to be talking about today is those three principles they're like little hinges that swing open big doors to big breakthroughs so let's dive in shall we let's dive in with the first principle and that is thinking big and achieving big. It's really about what you want to create in your life. You know, one of the things that I noticed thinking about some of the people that have gone on to build multi million dollar companies in the mortgage arena and some in the deep seven and eight figure levels are there's a trait, there's a golden thread that's woven amongst all of them. They all had a desire. For abundance they all had a desire to become millionaires they all had a desire to live an abundant life not because they selfishly just wanted to accumulate wealth just for accumulation's sake but because they just had this desire to make a big splash to make a big impact to serve a lot of clients to make a name for themselves but more importantly to have an impact in the world to be able to touch hearts change lives and help a lot of people and also to make a shit ton of money while they're doing it. You know, if you're going to work, you might as well get freaking rich, right? Uh, at the end of the day, it really just comes down to an abundant mentality as well as I think this, uh, as it's been framed in a excellent book called The Power of Positive Thinking uh, by W. Clement Stone. Uh, actually, it's called The uh, Success System That Never Fails by W. Clement Stone. Uh, he has a great phrase called inspirational dissatisfaction, inspirational dissatisfaction. So thinking big isn't just about having lofty ambitions and big, hairy, audacious goals. It's also about having some big desperation that leads to inspiration, some pain, some pressure that creates a positive purpose. You know, it's like without pressure, there is no diamonds. So there's a pressure there that has one wanting more in life, inspirational dissatisfaction. Perhaps you're feeling that as you're listening to this or watching this, where it's like, you know, I don't want to just get by. I don't want to just make do. I want to make freaking history. I, I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive. And so that inspirational dissatisfaction has two sides of it. It's moving towards and moving away from moving away from eking out a meager existence and I can't afford a prison, you know, living in a prison of, uh, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't afford to do this. I can't afford to do that. Lack limitation and scarcity wanting to break free from that prison. That's the moving away from, and then the moving towards is abundance, opulence, beauty, you know, having the ability to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, any time you want, to be able to make freedom money where you can, you know, stroke big checks to worthy causes, make a huge impact in the world, serve a lot of people, help a lot of people. And as the saying goes, if you didn't come from a wealthy family, may a wealthy family come from you right? Where it's like, it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what kind of lack limitation or poverty you came from. It's about where you're going. As I told my wife, when I was a struggling, struggling young man, and she's this beautiful woman that's four years my, uh, you know, older than me. And she was used to dudes like 
15 years older than me because she's going chasing after the you know, the more mature guys. And here I am the young buck, right? And I'm not established whatsoever. Uh, I have debt. I have a shit crap car that's all rusted out. You know, it's like a Flintstone mobile. You had to almost pedal it from the ground because it had big holes in the floor of it and it was all rusted to shit. And, you know, she's concerned about my ability to provide as we're talking about marriage and things like that. And uh, it was actually a friend of hers who was getting married to an accountant. So you can imagine, and he was like 15 years older than me. So similar age bracket to uh, the age that my wife to be at the time was used to dating in. And, you know, she's like, so, you know, my friend actually has a concern around, you know, your ability to provide. And I was like, I can, I, I can appreciate that. And this is the most important sale I ever made, you know, getting hitched with my beautiful bride. It's been 19 years and uh, we haven't looked back since. So far, no refund request, so I'm happy. But I closed the deal with this one-liner, okay? And this was from the heart. This wasn't just from some stupid-ass dating book. This was from the heart in the moment. I felt like it was a divine leading because I normally don't have super witty things to say, uh, but this is one of those rare moments where it's was like, man, that was a divine download. I asked her a question. I said, "Are you? do you get on a train because of where it's at or where it's going? She's like, I'm getting on this train, baby. <laughs> and it's been 19 years and uh, it's just been up and to the right since then. But, you know, it comes down to having this knowing that you're called by greatness for greatness. It's not about where you're at. It's about where you're going. And when you have promise for your future, there's power in your present, right? When there's promise for your future, there's power in your present. So do you have promise for your future? Do you have a big, hairy, audacious goal that scares the shit out of you and excites you at the same time, right? Because if it doesn't scare you and excite you at the same time, you're not playing a big enough game. So one of the problems that I see in this business is a lot of people, they think that to be successful, you need to be, quote unquote, realistic. You know, you need to be reasonable and realistic. That's a bunch of bullshit. That's a great way to be mediocre. If you want to live a mediocre life and have a mediocre business, be realistic, be reasonable. Now, that doesn't mean that you should try and have a million dollar goal starting from scratch with no mortgage experience in the first two months. Obviously, that's probably going to be unrealistic in a very accurate thinking sense. So we do want to have accurate thinking, but we also want to have big, hairy, audacious goals that call that, that call the greatness out of us that help us and fuel our fire to become the best version of ourselves, that inspire us to grow and that inspire the hero within to rise up. So you want to think big. If you're going to think, you might as well think big. And you want to have a dream that inspires you. So if you look at the principle behind this, it just comes down to a desire. If you have a desire to make 100K per year, you'll probably make 100K per year. If you have a desire to make a million bones a year and you're willing to pay the price and not fight against the price of success, not fight against the, pr the price of prosperity, and you're willing to invest in yourself to learn, to grow, and to learn the formulas, the recipes of success to be become a seven-figure earner, chances are you'll become a seven-figure earner. The limitation is not in your capability. The limitation is in your imagination. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's so true. The sky's the limit. The sky is really the limit. The, the limitation is all in your mind. As Napoleon Hill said, what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. So it comes down to having a North Star in your soul that calls you forth. And may that North Star be high and glorious and good and may it inspire greatness out of you. May it inspire you to become all that you're called to be. And so that's the first step. The first principle is think big to achieve big. And so stop having lackluster, limp, lame goals. Ask yourself, not, you know, what, what am I worthy of? But more importantly, what's worthy of me? What's worthy of my gift, my talent, my time, my life force? What's worthy of me? 
You want to have a worthy ideal that's worthy of your life. So you can always make more money. You can't get that time back, right? Once that time's gone, it's gone. So what's worthy of you, my friend? What's worthy of your gift, your time, your talent, your ability? What's worthy of you making sacrifices, going to bed late, getting up early? What's worthy of you stretching you out of your comfort zone? What's worthy of you feeling the fear and doing it anyways? What's worthy of you and you going all in for your dream? Once you lock in on that, you're unlocking a timeless, immutable principle for success that puts you in a category of the elite of the elite. Because frankly, the problem with most people is not that they shoot too high and miss, it's that they shoot too low and hit. You know, they shoot for the stump and hit the dirt instead of shooting for the stars and hitting the moon. So shoot for the stars and least case scenario, worst case scenario, you hit the moon. Don't shit. Don't shoot for the stump. Chances are you'll hit the shit instead of going for what you really want. You're settling for second best. Don't settle. Don't settle. Life is too short to settle. You can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. I wholeheartedly believe that to my core. And when I see uh, the best, the best that I've worked with over the last 17 years of coaching mortgage pros, what I see Those who achieve greatness, they're not necessarily the most talented. They're not necessarily the smartest. They're not necessarily the ones that have uh, the, the most work ethic, although they do have work ethic. They're the ones who have the audacity to dream big and to go after their dreams and believe in themselves and to have faith and to have grit and to persist. But it started with that dissatisfaction, inspirational dissatisfaction, and then the audacity to go after a God-sized dream that calls them into their God-sized calling and their God-sized destiny. So if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up way too much space. Start living on the edge. Start getting dangerous with your dreams. So that's principle number one. Think big, achieve big. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? Principle number two. Passion plus peace plus purpose equals prosperity. Passion plus peace plus purpose equals prosperity. What I see is the golden thread woven amongst all of them, a golden thread woven in all of their hearts. That is the difference that makes the difference. It's the little hinge that swings open the big big door to big breakthroughs. And that's they have a passion, a zest for life. They have a passion for their purpose. They have a passion for their mission. They have a passion to serve others. They have a passion. They got pep in their step. They got sparkle in their eye. No one has to motivate them. They're self-motivated. No one has to put fuel in the rocket. They fuel their own rocket. No one has to scrape them out of the bed with a spatula. They bounce out of bed and they are on mission, on purpose, and they've got that sparkle in their eye that has them going after their dreams. So there's a passion for their purpose that fuels their rocket, that self-propels them into intelligent and inspired action. They're already motivated. You know, The goal is not to try and motivate my clients. I just work with motivated people. Same thing with my companies that I own. I don't hire, I don't try to train motivated, I don't try to motivate my people. I hire motivated people because I don't want to have to babysit. I don't want to have to push a soggy noodle up a hill. And so do you have a passion for your dream? Do you have a passion for your work? Do you have a passion to serve clients? Do you have a passion to bring excellence for excellence sake? Do you have a passion to be in this industry and to help people with their finances and to help them get into the glory of home ownership, the pride of home ownership, the joy of home ownership. Do you have a passion for this work? Because no one's going to give you a pill and give you that passion. You got to have that passion. And maybe it's going to take some soul searching where you do some joy journaling, as I like to call it, and really get clarity on what is it about this business if you ha- when you have it the way you want it that does give you passion. Not the drama queen partners and the drama queen clients, not you know the headaches and the turmoil and the stress and the deadlines. What's the part of this business that lights your fire? Get connected to that. That'll light the fire of your passion. That's like pouring gasoline on the fire for your passion. So that's the first part of the equation for prosperity, guys. I've never met 
a prosperous, a truly prosperous human being who wasn't passionate about their work, who wasn't passionate about their mission and their purpose. And chances are you will be no exception, which is why it's part of this prosperity formula. The second part of this prosperity formula that is truly a principle that separates the top 1% income earners from all the rest is peace. They have a practice that cultivates peace. They might have a particular faith or religion, uh, or they might just have a practice like deep breathing, like meditating, like getting connected to source, getting connected to the divine, where they anchor themselves to the source of peace, where they anchor themselves to peace because they understand that their peace is their power. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how many deals you close. If you don't have peace, you don't have prosperity. You know that. I know that. Prosperity is synonymous with and inextricably linked to peace. In order to have prosperity, you have to have peace because it's in your peace you have your power. So when you have passion, but you don't have peace, you're basically just a fart in the wind. You know, you're blowing, you're getting blown from here to there like a leaf in a windstorm. You're not anchored, you're not tethered. And so you're leaking power. Every time you get frustrated, overwhelmed, stressed out, worried, anxious, you're leaking your power. You can't be effective when you leak your power. Like I couldn't communicate with you in power if I was stressed out and anxious. I have to be anchored to peace to have power. And the same thing goes for you. Chances are you know that to be true from your own experience, right? When you have your peace, you have your power. And there's a practice to peace. So those who are in the upper echelon of income earners in this industry and have a life worthy of emulation where they have magical relationships, meaningful relationships, they have rich connection with those they love, they have meaningful connections with their partners and their clients, they have lots of time off, vacation, they're fit, they're healthy, they're vibrant, they got pep in their step, they got sparkle in their eye, they're living a magical life of purpose and fulfillment. They always have a bedrock, an anchor point to peace. They have a practice of peace. They have a habit of peace. They don't hope that all the stars align in their circumstances to gain peace. No, they practice peace. And so that practice of peace can be cultivated in a lot of different ways. We talked about it already, right? Having a particular faith that you have real conviction about where you meet with your maker. Maybe you have time in prayer. You have time in the scriptures. Maybe you have time in meditation. You get connected to source. You still your mind. You breathe deeply. You still your mind. You breathe deeply. You put a relaxed smile on your face, perhaps. You roll your shoulders back. There's a physiology to peace. There's a practice to peace. Imagine trying to be prosperous and not having peace. Good luck, right? But when you have peace and you have your health and you have passion, you have prosperity. That's an energy. Prosperity is an energy. And so it's a practice that requires repetition. It's like building a muscle. You don't get fit by going to the gym one time. You get fit by having a practice, a rhythm, a routine, a ritual of exercising and stepping out of your comfort zone to build that muscle. You need to practice by virtue of getting out of your comfort zone and having a ritual of straining those muscles. Without that strain and that pain, there is no gain. In this case, it's a strain of stilling the mind. It's a strain of swimming up current. Instead of being anxious about a problem, you breathe into it. You give thanks in advance that it's already solved. You imagine that it's already addressed in divine perfection and divine order and divine timing. You lean into it in faith, trusting that it's all working together for your good. You give thanks even for that challenge. When you get really energetically aligned with the resolution and the solution, you give thanks for it because you know you that challenge is bringing out the best in you. It's making you smarter, wiser, sharper. It's strengthening you. Without the pressure, there are no diamonds. Without pressure, there are no diamonds. So you give thanks for that pressure, knowing that it's propelling you into your purpose and into prosperity. Bring it on. Notice that that's an empowering way to frame 
the circumstance that brings you peace and your peace is your power. And the third component in this prosperity formula is purpose. So purpose is what drives you. It's your heartbeat on why you do what you do. Are you just doing it to make a living? Are you just doing it to pay the bills? Are you just doing it so you can pay the mortgage? Are you just doing it just to kind of, you know, put food on the table? That's a great start, but that's not enough to propel you into really shining with the full amplitude and magnitude of your full capability, your full calling, and the full potential of why you're on this earth. You're not on this earth just to pay bills. You're on this earth because you have a special purpose. I believe that God knit you in your mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. And it wasn't just to pay your freaking bills. It wasn't just to make do. It was to make history. It wasn't just to survive. It was to thrive by virtue of bringing your gift into the world, not your need, but your seed, not coming to take, but to give so that you can bless others. You can help others. You're blessed to be a blessing, not just to increase your standard of living, but in increase your standard of giving. The best way to help the poor is not be one of them. So what if you were to make more money in one month, you used to make in six, seven, eight, 12 months, how much more could you give? How many more people could you help? What worthy causes could you stroke big, juicy checks to and not even skip a beat? What kids could you liberate? Like I own a company, co-own a company with two partners called Best Life Mortgage. And every seven loans liberates a child. Our mission is to liberate over 500 kids a year from the dark pit of slavery, from the shackles of slavery to give them a new hope, a new dignity, a new future, a new destiny. And so that is a purpose that's beyond just closing deals and making money. It's at the heartbeat of why we do what we do. And when you have a purpose that's more than just making money, it's about touching hearts and changing lives, that changes everything. Because we'll only do so much to accumulate wealth. We'll only do so much to pay the bills. We'll only do so much to have a fancy car and a big house. But when it's about a purpose, a divine purpose to make a difference in people's lives, to liberate people from the dark pit of their problem, their plight, into the radiant light of a new life or a new future or a new solution, and you're able to make a difference where that person's life is better because of you, that puts an extra thump to the heartbeat of what you do. It brings an umph to the heartbeat of what you do at a whole other level, right? It'll get you doing things you wouldn't normally do otherwise. It'll get you going through the muck and mire of a challenge, adversity, and allowing it to soul forge you because it ain't going to stop you. It may it might slow you up, but it's not going to hold you up. You're going to go under, over, around. It doesn't freaking matter because you're so connected to your purpose. Ain't nothing going to stop you. That's what I mean by purpose. So the prosperity formula is getting connected to your passion, getting connected to what lights your fire, what fuels your rocket. So what is that? in distinction to purpose, you might ask. What is passion and purpose? What's the distinction between passion and purpose? Well, they are very much intertwined, but passion is that zest. It's that sparkle in your eye, that pep in your step. It's that fire in your belly, right? That white hot fire burning desire. And your purpose is that connection to serving your fellow man. It's that connection to liberating your fellow souls, your fellow human beings, out of the plight of the problem into a, the radiant light of the solution. So it's about getting outside of yourself and serving others. I wrote a post today on my Facebook and it said something like, if you'll forget yourself in service to others, you will be unforgettable. You will not be forgotten. If you'll forget yourself in the service to others, you will not be forgotten. There is a principle at play that comes with you being connected to serve others. That's purpose. The fire in your belly, the pep in your step, the zest, 
that lightning rod energy to go after your dream with abandon, that's passion. And then, of course, peace is what anchors you and tethers you in the storm so that you're not getting thrown to and fro. You're anchored to peace, knowing your peace is your power, regardless of circumstance. Do you get torqued off? Sure, you're human. I get torqued off. I'm human. But then come back to the breath. Come back to the practice of peace. Come back to the anchor point of your power which is peace. And that's the recipe. That's the principle. And that is the recipe, the formula for prosperity that I see as a common thread among every single top producer that I've coached that does over seven figures and has an amazing life worthy of emulation. If you're doing everything yourself, there's only so far you can go. It might be 10 deals a month, but eventually you start to hit that glass ceiling, right? Where you hit the point of diminishing returns because you have no... Uh, battery juice because you're so drained because you're on the verge of burnout and you have no time to enjoy your toys, your friends, your family, because all you're doing is working. So you start getting that point of diminished returns where it actually becomes a curse. It's no longer a blessing. Now it's a curse. Now that you loathe going to work, now you resent taking another phone call because you're not happy because you have no life. You're out of kilter. You're out of balance. So having that abundant life, being in the top 1% income earner, category, doing half a million to a million plus per year in income, it's not about working longer and harder. It's about doing less and delegating more. There's only so many loans you can do because there's only, only so much time in the day. And then, by the way, what happens when you get sick, right? What happens when, for whatever reason, heaven forbid, you're incapacitated, your business falls apart. That's not a real business. That's a practice. Doing the tactical and technician work of being a mortgage broker or a loan officer. That's a practice. Having a business is owning a system. It's not owning a job. It's owning a system. And the system works when you're not working. Like I just got COVID. I got my ass kicked by COVID for two weeks. It sucked. I felt drained every day. I, I woke up in a, in a cold sweat three nights in a row. I, I don't remember being that tired, man. I was so tired coughing my lungs out for two weeks, drain for two weeks. There was many, many, many days I didn't work at all because I just frankly didn't have the energy in my tank. Now, if I had a practice, my whole business would have fallen apart for two weeks. But thankfully, I've got team, policy, procedure, protocol, systems in place, so the business runs in my absence. So I'm still bringing in that seven-figure trajectory revenue without me having to have everything fall apart because I got COVID for two weeks. That's the difference between having a business and having a glorified J-O-B, which stands for just over broke, if you ask me, which is what it looks like to have a practice. Now, you could be making great money as a practice and a practice as a owner of a practice and being a practitioner. You can make half a million a year. Um, you probably won't be having much time off. You probably won't have much of a life because if you're making half a million a year and you're not delegating, you're probably working 60, 70, 80 hours a week. That's just, unless you're living in California and you're making 9K per deal, chances are uh, you're really, really busy and you don't have much bandwidth for anything else. But if you want to make $100,000 a year, your time needs to be worth 50 bucks an hour. If you want to make a million bucks a year, your time needs to be worth $500 an hour. But if you're doing all that stuff yourself, instead of delegating it, your income is going to drop accordingly. So that's why you want to have a team in place, like a virtual assistant to handle the data entry and minutia, maybe a loan officer assistant, maybe uh, certainly a processor, underwriter, uh, depending on whether you're retail or broker, uh, whether you're in Canada or the US, the terminology is a little different, but the concept is the same. Do less, delegate more. But you can't just delegate and just fly by the seat of your pants and hope that they're going to do you know, 90% as well as you do because they don't know what you know and they don't have the same values and the same work practices. So that's where you need to put policy, procedure, protocol, and systems in place so you can delegate it effectively and consistently and have it be done 80 or 90% as well as you would have done it. If you have the right person and have their butts in the right seats in your bus, and you have the right structure, policy, procedure, protocol systems, then chances are you can have them do the same, if not better than you would do. And the great thing about that is you don't have to do it. They do it for you. Because here's a principle. 
Rainmaking always pays better than paper pushing. Prospecting always pays better than paper pushing. So as you delegate, you can spend more time prospecting, which is going to bring more deals in the door, which means that you can have a team policy, procedure, protocol, and systems to get those deals done without you having to manually do all the effort and all the work yourself. That means you can close more deals with less time, energy, and effort. That means you can earn more while working less. How cool is that concept? Like, imagine this for a moment. Imagine if you can make more money in one month than you used to make in 12 months. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Marinate your mind on that for a moment. More money in one month you used to make in 12 months. How much would you be making in a month? Just try that on for size. Feels kind of expansive, doesn't it? Chances are that freaks you out and excites you at the same time, right? And that's like a paradigm popping idea because there's no way you can earn that kind of money doing it the way you're doing it now, true? You're gonna need to leverage your time. You're gonna need to delegate. You're gonna need to build a dream team. You're gonna need to have better systems. You're gonna need to be more streamlined, more efficient. You're gonna be able to, you need to be able to just own the part that really lights your fire, that charges your battery, that you love. Maybe it's meeting with clients, meeting with partners, uh, cashing checks, just do what you do best and get the best to do all the rest. And now you can earn more in one month you used to make in 12 months. How did you do that? You did that by delegating more and you doing less. You do less and you delegate more. You do what you do best, you get the best to do all the rest. And that's how champions in this industry roll. They are all about leverage, leveraging their time, leveraging their talent by building that dream team. And they have specialists on their team. So they have a virtual assistant, they have an LOA, they may have a few LOAs, they may have a few assistants, but they started with one assistant, then they moved on to two, then they moved on to three. Next thing you know, they got a bustling business where they're making seven figures and they're working 30, 20 hours a week. How is that possible, Dorn? One step at a time, but it starts with the dream. It starts with the desire to build that kind of a life and that kind of freedom. And it start, starts also with the inspirational data dissatisfaction of settling for second best and I can't afford a prison and not having the time, not having the time freedom and being inspirationally dissatisfied about that such that they say enough is enough, no more have had it. I'm going to build a magical business, a purpose-driven business, a passion-driven business, and I'm going to make freedom money and I'm going to double, triple, quadruple, quintuple my income while working less hours. I'm going to build policy, procedure, protocol, systems. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to learn the systems. I'm going to learn the formulas, the recipes. And so you might be thinking, Doran, sounds overwhelming. Sounds like a lot. It is a lot. But again, you can try and figure out all this stuff yourself, or you could invest in your own personal and professional development and condense decades into days by learning the recipe. Like if you didn't have the internet and someone was to ask you, hey, can you cook me a souffle? Chances are you'd be like, uh, no, I don't know how to cook a souffle. And if you didn't have access to Google, you wouldn't know how to cook a souffle unless you've made a souffle before. But as soon as you have access to Google, you just type in the query souffle recipe or you know, gourmet uh, five-star chef souffle recipe and bada bing, bada boom, you got a souffle recipe and you can produce the outcome of a champion level gourmet five-star souffle from a master chef on your first iteration, on your first try, if you just follow the instructions and do what the instructions tell you to do with the right sequence, the right recipe, the right formula, the right ingredients with the right portions and the right sequence, you can get to that outcome without messing around trying to reinvent the wheel yourself. Same goes with your mortgage business. You can condense decades into days by investing in yourself with a proven formula instead of messing around trying to reinvent the wheel on your own. It's the difference between pressing the P button on the elevator and going straight to making prosperity money, penthouse money, instead of grinding up the 20-story staircase with a 50-pound backpack on, busting your buns, doing it the hard way. It's all about a recipe. It's about a formula. It's about leverage. So if you're listening to this, you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. And uh, man, this definitely reawakened me to some principles that I kind of need to 
blow the dust off in my own life and my own business. Uh, these are just healthy reminders. We often need reminding more than we need educating. And I need that recipe, Doran. I feel like I'm reinventing the wheel. I feel like I'm wasting way too much time with fruitless toil. I feel like I'm spinning my wheels in the same spot. And I'm done with doing it the hard way. I'm ready to st step up and start working smarter, not harder. If that's you, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we'll lift up the hood on your business, either talk with me personally or speak with one of my consultants. We'll have an honest conversation. We'll shine the light of truth on your situation. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. Either way, though, you'll leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. Fair enough. So if that's you, and that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, and it definitely should, and you're 100% commissioned mortgage professional, you earn 85 basis points or higher, and you eat what you kill on 100% commission, and you're ready to take a quantum leap breakthrough in your income while working smarter, not harder, and you're ready to condense decades into days and make more money in one month than you used to make in three, four, five, six months, then I invite you to book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So that's what we got for today, guys. I trust you got some insight, some value, some new distinction, or some refreshment on old distinctions today. We just covered three success principles that separate the top 1% income earners from all the rest. If you dig what you've been hearing on this podcast, love to get your feedback. Please write us review, uh, Spotify or iTunes, anywhere where you find our podcast. We'd love to get a review and get the word out in a greater measure by virtue of your feedback. So thank you in advance for that. And again, if you're ready to take your business to the next level and start pouring gasoline on the fire, working smarter, not harder, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. This is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.